that from chapters five and six. Um, and we're going to start with this, um, uh, what, what uh, Woolsey calls hitting the target. Um, and you know, on one hand, this seems, um, th this may seem really basic. Um, but as I read the book for the first time, you know, I, I thought, boy, this is, this is really useful. And this is, you know, this is, this is what, what, what we need. You know, we, it, we need this, this process. Um, and, and so what, what I have done here is, um, is, is I've taken Wolsey's content and I've basically created a, a matrix uh, for it. Um, and the way he breaks it down is he says, you know, he says we're, we're trying to get to one of, with, with all of our options, that we're trying to get to one of 20 possible contracts. And I so, tried to figure out what the 20 contracts yes. were. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so that, that's why I've presented it as, a, that's why I turned it into a grid. So this grid has 20 boxes, right? Um, and on one, you know, I mean, you know, at, at risk of, um, you know, giving you bad memories of, you know, eighth grade algebra or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. But, uh, um, and so, so, so Woolsey breaks it down into these four on, uh, on, on, on one side of the matrix here. Um, hard score game, small slam, and grand slam. Um, and the fact of the matter is grand slams are, are pretty rare and it's not like even small slams are you know coming up all the time so on a lot of your bidding those get eliminated pretty quickly and then of course on the other side we have uh, the five different strains where we might play um, and at least from a, a, a duplicate standpoint this all makes sense right because um, cer certainly the separation a part score in game because you know while it doesn't matter whether we play one spade or two spade or three spades they all score the same based on how many tricks right until we get into game uh, game territory and game bonuses the scoring doesn't change so it doesn't really matter matter the level of the part score it's just a part score so yeah so we can lump all the part scores into one um, and then we go to game and then we get into slams. And so, of course, what we're trying to do is um, use our Bringlish on, an, on any given auction to narrow these 20 down to one and get to what looks to be the best contract. <clears throat> so, um, and by the way, in the book, this is, um, uh, this is a, uh, starting on page 105, like 105 to 109. So what we want to do is we want to look at an auction um, and we want to go through this process for responder, holding this hand, and we'll go through several auctions here where opener, so, so the, the one given here is that opener? That's the opener. Is no. This is responder. This is responder. Okay. And this is not at all about the first round of bidding because that is the same, regardless. So your partner deals and opens a diamond, and with this hand over here, with your thirteen points and five card heart suit, uh, you're going to start with a heart response. So the process we want to go through is. Um, Responder, what is your thought process and how does this change with different rebids by the opener um, to start eliminating contracts that aren't going to be in play um, and eventually hopefully get to the best contract as the auction proceeds. So Notice that, and, and now, and, and this is this is a good example because we, you know, something you know, we want to we, we want to bring thoughts of captaincy into this as well, um, and and remember, captaincy revolves around who knows the most about the two hands, All right? So from the moment partner opens one diamond, even before you bid your your one heart, 
can't you start eliminating a bunch of these already? Spades. Okay, so um, well, let, let's 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 start with the with the uh, with the, the vertical uh, uh, the the columns on the chart first here. Get rid of part scores. All right, we can get rid of all part scores, right? Because partner partner opened the bidding, and we have an opening hand. So with you know, we at least belong at the game level, right? Now, which game is best, we don't know yet, if we're playing game, or if there's a slam in the picture, which slam is best. So you haven't even opened your mouth yet, and your partner who opened a diamond doesn't know that part scores are eliminated, but you know that, right? So again, this is already, you know, we're already starting to realize, you know, you, you know, at this stage, you are more the captain, right? Because, because you can start eliminating some contracts that your partner can't. And your part, yeah. Now you know you're going to start with a heart response, um, but even when you bid a heart, there's not a whole lot that your partner can do. But um, so yeah, so we'll we'll get rid of part scores because because we know you have greater aspirations. And then what else could we eliminate? Somebody started. Did you say spades? Spades. All right. Yeah, you have two little spades, and partner opened a diamond. A partner didn't open a a, a five card major or a five card or longer major, right? Two hands is four. So. If partner at most has four spades, this contract's not going to get played in spades. Unless your partner really has her hand badly missorted, right? <laughs> and made the wrong bit. <coughs> um, what else do we think we can eliminate? Probably clubs. clubs. Yeah, why don't we get rid of clubs too, right? Because partner opened a diamond. And while my partner may have clubs as well, the clubs are never going to be any longer than the diamonds, right? They could be equal length. They could be 4-4 four, four, or 5-5, five, five, and partner's opening a diamond in those situations, right? But even if partner's 5-5 five, five in the minors, are you really interested in playing clubs? If partner probably at most has five of them? You have five. Probably not, right? You're not going to have a fifth there. You know, if you know if you were going to play in a minor, it would surely be diamonds, right? Because you've got king, queen, fourth of support there. So notice that before you ever even open your mouth, you have gone from 20 possible contracts to nine, just like that. So sometimes we can eliminate a lot of the candidates right off the top. Um, of course, you know, the tricky part is you know, you're, you're seeing this little thing in, in, in your head, right? <laughs> this, this, this little matrix is, is in your mind. You've got to, you know, you don't get the benefit. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great? You would all have your little whiteboards at the tables, you know, and partner opens a diamond, and with the clock running, you pull out your little chart, and you're like, hang on, I have to cross off some of these contracts that we won't be playing in. Well, that's the yeah. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> and, don't, and partners do, or uh, opponents don't look. Or partner. Yeah. Or partner. Yeah. Better yet, no. We should, we should just electronically. Everybody could have like a little iPad or some sort of, you know, electronic, yeah, yeah. you know, remote device or, or an app for your phone. Yeah. And you pull out your phone and you just start, you know, punching boxes and X's appear. As we eliminate contracts, <laughs> so no, but yes, like, like it, like it, you know, you know as, as, you know, as the, the the laws of, of bird scene, and it, you're not allowed to use any memory aids. This all has to happen <laughs> in your mind. Don't worry. So you can't do it on your hand either. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? So, all right. So, so that we've done right off right off the bat. Um, so you go ahead and respond to your heart, but you know you 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 have already eliminated, you know, more than half of the. 20 boxes on this grid. So from here, what we want to do is we want to look at a bunch of progressions, different rebids by opener, and then see, um, okay, what else can we eliminate? Where, you know, where are we going next? And what will you do next? And we're not going to carry every auction out to the end, but, but what we're going to do is get to a point where we can say, yes, definitively, this is the contract we want to be in. Or we can narrow it down to like three or fewer uh, and go from there. So why don't we start with a one spade rebid by opener after a diamond by partner. 
And by the way, uh, Al, this hand over here is responder's hand. <clears throat> and so we're going through the process of trying to figure out uh, what contracts we can eliminate and what, what the possible contracts are, are going to be. <clears throat> okay. So, when partner rebids one spade, he doesn't have four hearts. What would you eliminate? Okay, we, we do know that partner doesn't have four hearts because mm -hmm. with, you know, with, with four, four in the majors, they would give you a raise, right? Rather than introducing a new suit. However, that doesn't eliminate hearts, does it? Because hearts is still a possible place to play if opener has three. So the one spade rebid doesn't really take away any more strings, right? It doesn't rule out diamonds, hearts, or no trump, which I think are all still in the picture. We had already eliminated spades. Okay, so partner bid a spade. Um, but it does, I think, eliminate, I think it does knock out a few of these boxes. Which ones? The Grand Slam, anyway. Uh, the Grand Slam. And on what basis have we eliminated Grand Slam as a possibility? The rebid, the rebid is minimal. Yeah. If partner can't, if partner's next bid is spades, and it's not a jump shift into spades, opener's not strong enough for us to be thinking about a Grand Slam. Small slam may be unlikely, but it's not impossible, right? Because opener can have some very nice hands that are just not quite a jump shift, right? Picture opener with a nice 16 or 17, and of course a real diamond suit. We know this to be um, at least four. And now that opener's not rebidding a no trump to convey a balanced hand, this actually increases the likelihood that opener's diamonds are at least five in length. So we know it's at least a four card suit and very well could be five or more. So even an auction like this, if there were a slam in the picture, it would be in diamonds, right? Most most likely. And this is not so, a reverse at the one level? This is not a reverse, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we are at the same level. So, yeah, so this does not show any extra values. One spade, this could still be a 12 count, or 14 or 15, or anything on up to not quite a jump shift. All right, well, at least that gets us down to, uh, down to six possible contracts. So we move from 20 to nine to six. So what I would ask you now as responder is, what should your next call be after one spade? Clubs, force, fourth suit forcing? Well, I like that. Is everybody on board with fourth suit forcing here? And this is really about as far as we're going to take this auction. <clears throat> so remember that two clubs is potentially, and here actually is, artificial. It is game forcing. And this is just telling opener, hey, we need to be in game because your one heart didn't convey that. But now you need to tell partner, since we did not have the luxury of a convenient two over one, we've got to tell partner we're going to game. And... I need a little more information from you. Um, and I think now at this stage, responder, you are squarely in the captain's seat. Um, um, because, and, and, and to refer back to what we were talking about last week, so this is, so two clubs as fourth suit forcing, it's in, this is, this is a situation where it's, I mean, this is, this is mostly instructional, right? Because you're, you know, because you're you, you're you're not you're 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 forcing the game, um, and you want to gather some information in this process. I mean, it's, I, I think I think here your two clubs is both. It's it's in, it's informative and you know, and you're also kind of commanding a, a response. Um, you're probably going to get a very good idea of where you belong with openers next bid, right? <clears throat> What what angle do you think? What, like, like what are and I'm thinking of 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 two two primary possibilities here from opener. What can you find out after you bid your your fourth suit forcing? Two hearts. You would say I have three of them. 
Okay, so you might hear two hearts from partner, and that would tell you that you probably belong in hearts, right? Because while opener might not raise you on three, they would want to have four, they can certainly show you delayed support in case you have five, which you do. And I think if you heard two hearts here, you would probably arrive at, okay, I think four hearts is where we belong. You would probably be at your target contract. If partner doesn't have three hearts, what's the other possibility that you would really like to hear? Three diamonds, two diamonds. Well, I mean, if we can't play four hearts, we'd like to be able to play three no, right? Um, however, do you want to bid no trump on your own with Queen Doubleton of clubs, which is the unbid suit? Now, I mean, it might be all right. Um, it might be better actually to have a lead against no trump coming into your queen. Um, so, um, on the other hand, if partner bids two no now, you'll know that partner also has an honor in clubs, right? So that would be okay. If opener bid two, no trump, you would probably raise to three, right? Or you could show your diamonds along the way. <clears throat> Just in case opener, and we looked at, we've looked at that hand the last couple of weeks also, right? I mean, it would, wouldn't hurt to, to, you know, get your diamonds in the auction next, and then opener would, you know, at this point be, be better placed than yeah. Okay, well, you know, maybe we're still playing three no. Opener's probably bidding three no unless their hand suddenly got better here to where they're thinking about slam. But so three diamonds is certainly a free bid along the way to three no. But if we're just playing game, I still think we'd rather play three no. It would also be reasonable since slam is probably not in the picture. You might just raise two no to three no and not bother showing the diamonds. I'm I'm okay with either option here, to tell you the truth. So. So if you're on your way to diamonds, and opener's a minimum of twelve, let's say twelve, mm -hmm. and you have thirteen, that's twenty five. Mm -hmm. Seven, twenty seven. Oh, uh, twenty no, twelve and thirteen is twenty five. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is 25 points enough for five diamonds? If you if nobody has a stopper in clubs? If, I mean, if, 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 if you do. determine that three no is unplayable, yeah. Um, yeah, I would still I would still want to try and play a game. Okay. Um, if you know it might not be it might not be a guarantee, right? I mean it might, you know, especially if there are two quick club losers off the top, right. you might need a heart finesse or you might need a spade <laughs> finesse for your eleventh trick in diamonds. Um, but if, if three no looks to be hopeless because you're wide open in a suit, I'd still rather try game. So even a minor suit game, and e even if we go back to, uh, you know, even if you're thinking about, you know, old Augury Grant books from way back when telling you that you needed, you know, some 28 or 29 points to play five of a minor. Yeah, um, that, that is certainly ideal. Um, but, you know, look, you... You know, you decided that your game was worth the game force. I think your hand is worth the game force. It may be that the hands don't mesh so wonderfully together. Um, but you know, once you go down the road of we're going to game, I, I think you I think you gotta stick to your guns and okay. uh, and if that game is five diamonds, so be it. Uh, you know, remember we looked at an example I think last time uh, where you you know another possibility is what if partner has something like King Doubleton of Hearts. That could rear its head too, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to bid three diamonds after two no, remember that partner could bid three hearts then on honor doubleton to suggest that as a possibility, right? Because we already know, you know, because we already know that opener doesn't have four hearts, and when they come back two no, they deny three hearts. So if opener supports hearts, you know, in like the you know, we're getting into the third and fourth, you know, fourth round of, of bidding here. Um, then it can't be three card support, right? So, but it might be something. But yeah, how would you feel about four hearts if opener had king doubleton of hearts? Well, I'd rather try that than five diamonds probably. 
<laughs> but he doesn't know it's you have five yet. Yes and no. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you know. <laughs> All right. There is a very, there is a very strong suggestion that you have five hearts. Because if you don't have five hearts, you have a balanced hand, and you and you will bid this thing differently. Um. Yeah, I mean, this is part of the reason that we go through fourth suit. I mean, the, I mean, the main reason is yes, we wanna we wanna get the game force rolling since we couldn't do that with our first bit. But in practice, I will tell you that almost all fourth suit auctions, responder has a five card major, and they are trying to not lose a. Uh, they are trying to not lose a five three fit. In practice, that's what happens. Do you guarantee a fifth heart when you bid two clubs for suit forcing? No. But there will be a lot of hands where your next bid might just be three no. You know, where you where you just say, okay, well, you know, like, like if you have a better club stopper and only four hearts, a lot of times you would just bid three no if you're not interested in the slam. Hmm. Um, so, but, you know, uh, there's no reason, there's no reason not to slow this down and take it you know, go a little more slowly, see see what opener has to say. Um, you know, the other possibility is, you know, like let's say you only had four hearts, but you had a fifth diamond. And then let's say instead of that doubleton spade, you had a singleton spade. Well, now all of a sudden this hand may start looking more and more attractive to pursue six diamonds, right? Yeah. So that would be a case where you would want to start with your four suit forcing and then you know, slow it down a little bit, and then whatever. R remember, the other thing too is if opener opener does bid two hearts, if you do something else after that, like bid three diamonds, then you start to clear up the picture and say, yeah, you know, I I, I know you're showing me three guy heart support in case I had five, but actually what I'm after here is I have slam interest in diamonds. When the auction starts off this way, that's what it looks like. And we had to use support suit, right? Because, you know, if we support diamonds at this point of the auction, well, two diamonds is just a weak preference, right? That's a weak hand. Three diamonds, as most people play it, is only invitational, not game forcing. Four diamonds, well, while well, that might show uh, a, a very good hand for diamonds, um, that has carried you past three no trump, right? Which we try not to do. Yeah. So you see how all of these diamond raises at the second point of the auction are flawed with the hand that you have. And so we say, okay, no, we can't support diamonds just yet. We've got to start with our fourth suit forcing. This is what, yeah, this is a, you know, an example of one, you know, one of those auctions where if you don't play fourth suit forcing, you, you really have a problem. Um, you know, and I, I, I hate to, you know, get into those situations where, you know, where we say, where we say, well, you really can't bid this hand right if you don't play convention, blah. <laughs> um, but some, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes there are hands that are just darn near impossible to bid if you don't play a certain convention. And so, so this is, you know, this might be the case here with, with a hand like this. So again, you know, we don't, you know, we don't need to carry this out to, to it, it's finished because it can go so many different ways. But. Um, um, but what you have done here is you have <coughs> you've eliminated um, you've eliminated a lot of boxes, right? <coughs> so, all right, well, let's look at something a little different, and we'll take these three X's away. Because remember, from the moment we had the opening bid. We went from 20 to 9, right? So, okay, what if the sequence starts a bit differently? What if we go a diamond, a heart, and open a rebid? So one no. This, by the way, is going to create an easier auction for you than the one we just looked at. <laughs> 12, 14. All right, opener has a minimum balanced hand. 
doesn't have four hearts, right? Could have three hearts. Doesn't have four spades. <laughs> um, probably doesn't have four spades, but we don't really care about that because we eliminated spades as a possible contract anyhow, but right? No trump. So, if partner has three spades, I don't think no trump is attractive. Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, if partner has, uh, I, I'm not too too worried about that. I, I don't think that partner would uh, be so uh, quick to rebid one no without spades stopped on an option like this. So, what? Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had to bid one no with no stoppers somewhere. <laughs> With, well, with, with one, at least one it's, 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 it's possible. But on the other hand, you're, you know, how many po partner opened a diamond, but how many points does partner have in diamonds? Could it imply that maybe he has five diamonds since he didn't show his face? Um, I mean, you know, dime, we don't know at this point that the diamonds are, are more than four. The diamond suit still could just be a four card suit. If partner bids a second suit, the diamonds are more likely to be five, because that's showing an unbalanced. That would suggest an unbalanced hand, right? Okay. So. So he could have three spades, four. Three, partner could be four triple three. Four. Partner could be four okay. four in the minors. Um, okay. Yeah, there 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 are other possibilities here, um, but yeah, most likely there is a spade stopper over there. Not absolutely guaranteed. But most likely. So, what would you eliminate after the one no rebid? Grand slam goes away. Yeah. Okay, definitely grand. What about small slam? Probably small too. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a small slam if partner has twelve to fourteen and we have thirteen? Doubt it. Not one that if it, if there is one, we shouldn't be looking for it. Right. <laughs> okay, so this is this is easier, right? Because now we're down to, to, to three possible contracts. I think this also conveys, I think why you know something that I stress all the time, um, and why, and it's also part of the reason why, uh, frankly, I have moved over the years into uh, a much. Um, I'm, I'm much more comfortable opening a no trump with a five card major, whereas I didn't used to do it. The value of limiting your hand to a very specific range as soon as possible in the auction. There are really only three contracts that you should be considering at this point, right? And it would be these three games. Right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Right? We we're, we're, we've decided 